the oil and gas industry, what the roles of your organizations are and what it is that you contribute um, to the industry. Um, if I can ask um, to start with you, Mr. Mbano Mulunga. My name is Mania Mulunga, I'm the Managing Director of NAMCO. Uh, NAMCO, is a, uh, NAMCO is a national oil company of Namibia, NOC. We are an integrated oil company, meaning we operate in uh, upstream space, oil and gas industry, and also downstream space. Upstream space is what we are. Okay, yeah, thank you. The upstream space is what uh, Britain is talking about, uh, really that talks about oil and gas uh, exploration and production, while the downstream space is uh, relating to the trading and distribution of petroleum products. Um, so we operate in the space, uh, we've seen uh, the various number service stations and then uh, national oil storage facility that we operate, so that's the downstream space. Uh, there's also what we call the midstream space, which deals with uh, refining the transportation of the fuel. We don't really participate there yet, but we are an integrated oil company that operates in the upstream and the downstream. And we are basically owned by the state, 100% by the state, and we are the state's vehicle, obviously, to participate uh, in this sector. Thank you. I'm going to this event. I'm um, really privileged to be here and to participate in this uh, dialogue and discussions. Um, I think as this Bridget was saying earlier, um, you know, the oil and gas has a life cycle for, for Belgium. And we start off with obviously exploration phase. Usually, when the minister gives us a license, uh, it's an exploration license, which entitles you to do certain activities. And one of those activities is uh, the seismic activities that we have to undertake. Which are obviously not as expensive as the ones. And then you do your, your exploration drilling, which is basically taking a rig, whether that's onshore or offshore, uh, to drill um, a well, you know, several kilometers into the ground or in the sea if you are doing it offshore, uh, to basically determine whether there is any hydrocarbon accumulation which you can license. Um, and then once you do that, and you Make a discovery not that you've done now with Shell the town. You, you, because making a discovery in itself does not give you an idea of how much oil there is. So you have to go into the next phase to appraise basically what you have found. Uh, so appraisal just means that you're appraising to find out what's the volume of the resources we have. So that's what we're currently uh, doing. That's the phase that we are in. Uh, so, both our, ourselves and our partners, Shell and Total, I think in the third quarter of this year, September, October, we started the replacement program to draw you know, another five months or so, basically to determine how much oil is likely to be lying in those license areas. And obviously, once you successfully uh, do your appraisal program, you will then you know, make a final investment decision. Knowing how much there is, proving the commerciality, and, and then you draw you know, several development worlds, which you know which will cost you a lot of money to get yourself ready to, to produce that oil. So production is really just the extraction of the oil from the land. We'll make my contribution by um, trying to put these discoveries into context. Uh, as Bridget was saying, they they made some huge discoveries in, in a South American country called Guyana. Uh, more than 10 million barrels. Um, now, there are some industry observers, observers that believe that Namibia might be in the same league, or even probably more. Uh, but obviously, those, those numbers will have to be verified by the prison program that we're currently doing. Um, but yeah, we, we, when we made these discoveries in, in um, February, we commissioned a study by world, world uh, known um, consulting company called Wood McKenzie. And I just want to share some statistics uh, with the audience just to, um, because uh, this is no small matter, these are significant discoveries. Um, I mean, that study actually con 
proves that uh, after years of exploration, uh, basically after 30 years of post-independence exploration, Namibia could find itself the third largest oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa within a decade. Um, the graph and Venus discoveries that we've made in Orange Bay offshore are amongst the top 20 global discoveries in the last decade. Um, these discoveries will make huge contributions to our GDP. At the peak, um, about 2035 or so, they could add up to $5.6 billion. Uh, not, not Namibian dollars, because in the oil industry, we don't talk about Namibian dollars. Talk about this. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to contribute up to $5.6 billion US dollars per annum. To state the revenues. Okay. Um, and uh, the initial estimates after these discoveries um, show that Graf and Venus have the potential to almost double the Namibian GDP by 2040 uh, to close to 37 billion US dollars. So, so these are significant discoveries from an employment creation point of view. At its peak uh, by 2028 20, or so, I think we should be able to employ about 3,600 additional people, uh, indirect, direct jobs, indirect jobs um, as well. Um, and again, we, the nice thing about Namibia is having made these discoveries now is that we, we can learn from others how they have done it um, over the past. So there are very good examples out there. Um, and uh, you know, oil and gas you know, production is not rocket science. So there are lessons out there, how to do it and how to do it. Um, so I think we are well placed. Uh, I'm a positive person uh, you know, by nature. Uh, but I believe, I think, where we are as a country, I think we, uh, the timing of the discoveries are uh, um, are good. We've got the uh, institutions in place. Um, I think this is not a country where you would try to the managing director of the National Oil Company giving a billion dollar or a billion eight US dollar terms. So those kind of things, you know, would not happen. So with all this income uh, and a population of 2.5 million people, um, the government should be able to do a good job to make sure that the citizen actually have. Um, um, a good life and all these opportunities that the minister was talking about, local content, to make sure that you know, young people like yourselves, you know, you get yourself involved in the industry to make sure that you participate in the, in all the myriad of, of services that will be required um, to, to, um, to make sure that the industry takes off. I mean, I, I personally predict that um, we will spend in the next five years between 10 to 20 billion US dollars in this economy. And obviously, most of it will not be spent here because you know, it will be spent on, you know, on you know, engineering works, floating uh, production uh, systems. Um, but I mean, even if you just take a, you know, a small percentage of, say, 5% or 10% of the money remaining in the country, it's quite significant. So, there's a lot of hope. Um, some of us started in the oil industry, I personally started off 27 years ago, you know, as maybe some of your age. So um, it's not too late to start. Uh, it's a great opportunity that obviously the, the country has, has provided. So, yeah, you should, you should take up the challenge and make sure that you participate uh, in this industry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I just want to again thank the organizers of this event uh, for facilitating these kind of conversations. Because it's through these conversations that we start understanding the oil industry, the impact of the oil industry to our economy, to our uh, various regions as well. So I think from now on, we will continue to participate, uh, to engage with everybody, uh, to make sure that we are on the same wavelength.
because what I'm guess is that this effective business service has been made to appeal. Um, Marine Africa is doing a great job onshore drilling forwards. Uh, not only drilling forwards, but they've done a lot in terms of drilling water wells as well. Uh, 22 water wells, uh, so, so that's not a small matter. So I think we should, uh, as Namibians, also be appreciative for some of these efforts. Not only that, I'm sure there's a lot of people from the Kamamu region that have been employed. Uh, I don't know, but how many people? More than 500 people that, that, that received employment. So this would not, not have been possible if there was no oil and gas exploration in the Kamamu region. Um, so I think let's continue the, the engagements and the conversations. Um, oil and gas is going to have a positive impact on Namibia, no doubt. And I think we will decide, as the Minister said, we will have to make a decision whether it's going to be positive or a negative uh, impact on the